Hi, my name is Paul Tyler. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a photographer. Semi-retired now, so I don't take commercial pictures anymore. I just take them for me because I love them. And I also teach. The age group of the people I teach are from 10 years old through to 80. And the ability groups are from the total beginner who turned up with a smartphone right through to the boys and girls that want to learn to take photography as a profession. And good for them. Now, in this video, I'm going to discuss film. I'm going to discuss the different types of film, how you should choose the film that you require for ever the job you want to do. Because it's not just a matter of making changes in the back as you do with your digital camera. You have to decide your ISO before you begin, etc. So I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you get a lot from it. Thank you. I'm really pleased you've joined me for this video um, about film. I hope it's because you took on board everything I said in the last video about film and digital and you're now willing to give film a try and see what you can do. And I will remind you, and for those people that didn't see the previous video, in my videos I talk about taking images that you're proud of, not images that receive a thousand likes on Instagram because anybody, anybody can pick up a digital camera, go out somewhere that's suitable in the autumn or the springtime and take pictures, take a thousand pictures and then go through them and pick that one picture that worked really well and then stick it on Instagram and get lots of likes. And that's exactly what's happening out there. But taking a picture, perfectly exposing it, Having the satisfaction of the composition was spot on, the lighting superb, that satisfaction. And then to have your peers, other excellent photographers, looking at your work and agreeing with you that you got the lighting right, the composition's perfect, your exposure is spot on. There's nothing quite like it for satisfaction. So. That's why, we have, that's why we are talking about film today. There's basically three types of film and there's, they deal with them differently. There's black and white, there's transparency and there's print film. Basically, black and white film is just that, black and white film. Then there's uh, transparency film or slide film as it used to be called and that's has a, a process that's called E36, that's the way it's processed. So it's quite often known as E36 film. And then there's print film, and that's processed with a C42 chemical process. So that's often known as C42 type of film. Now, the three I've got here are the three films that I like to use. So you've got Tri-X, Kodak Tri-X, TX400 or tri -X. that's 400 ISO. Remember what I said about you have to choose your ISO. And you also remember in the last video I said don't confuse dynamic range with exposure latitude. They're completely different things. So we, both, we all know that the dynamic range of these films is far inferior to the modern digital camera. The modern digital pickup and point digital camera that you can buy for 55 quid in Jessup's is going to have, give you far more dynamic range than any of these films will. But what we, these films will give you is that something that digital pictures can't give you. So let's talk about the black and white film. So this is 400. The dynamic range of a black and white film is probably about, this particular one, is probably about six stops. So that's, if you expose the darkest recesses of the scene that you're photographing and then uh, expose for the highlights, the brightest part of the scene. If it's more than six stops between the two, then you're not going to be able to capture everything. You're either going to have to let the shadows block up or let the sky burn out, or whatever the bright area is, burn out. What you can do with black and white film is you can push it. 
which means that if you're using 400 ISO film and it won't allow you to take a picture because the scene's too dark and your shutter speed would be too low and you haven't got a tripod with you, you can push it one stop to 800 ISO or you can push it two stops to 1600 ISO. You can probably push it further but I, I wouldn't do that. Now it's the same as it is with digital. As you raise the ISO from what's printed on the pack you're going to increase the grain. Actually a lot of photographers like that with black and white film. They like to increase the grain and it, it's, that's what makes black and white picture is its grain structure and then there's how you print it and what sort of paper you put it on. But let's stick with the film for the time being because probably our films are going to be developed and then scanned onto a DVD or CD or onto a stick and then we're going to put them into our pro uh, computer anyway. And well, if you're going to have them printed, they're going to be printed from a scan rather than a negative. I don't think very few people actually print from an enlarger anymore. Anyway, so that's basically about black and white film. 400 AS ISO, or ASA as it used to be in my day. Right, let's talk about Fuji Velvia 100 ISO. I use 100 ISO in the summer and I use 400 ISO in the winter when it's darker. However, I've got this one because over the next few videos I'm going to be taking pictures with this and I'm going to push it to 400 ISO because you can push Velvia as well. You can, you can push any slide film. You can pull them as well. You could, you could have 5 up 100 and you could pull it down and stop to 50. Um, but basically I talk about pushing. Now, I like Velvia very much but you need to understand with film that's got colour in it that it's not just about buying a film in the ISO. Different films do different things. Velvia is brilliant for landscapes. Fuji, Fuji loves green. Um, I don't know if you remember many years ago when you saw the adverts for film. Fuji adverts always had lots of green in the picture and Kodak adverts always had lots of red because Kodak film was always prone to pick up the reds nicely. The problem with Velvia is it's brilliant for um, for landscapes but it's a little bit hot for taking pictures of people. It gives them a little bit of a tan and it, the skin tones are a little unnatural so you wouldn't want to do um, portraits with this one. For that you'd, uh, you'd use Pruvia which is um, another Fuji film. Fuji film, yes, yeah, so a Fuji chrome. Uh, Pruvia which would be great for portraits but not so good for landscapes. And again, you can push and pull that because it's a slide film. And then last of all, there's print film. This would have been the one that you took the pictures, took it to Boots or Walmart or wherever you take it to, get them to print it for you, and then you get your prints back in an envelope and you sit and go through them with your friends. There's really no reason, as a keen amateur photographer, to use print film. It's, it doesn't offer you anything the same as slide film does. It, it, it's, it's great for snaps but it's not really what you would want to use for anything particular. Now this particular one I've picked it because it's called Professional Pro 400 or 400H. Now this was used by wedding photographers because many years ago you couldn't get good quality print from slide film. I could go into details about how photographers use slide film because it was printed in magazines, shiny magazines, newspapers, everybody used slide film. Nobody used print film. But wedding photographers needed to have prints for the bride and groom and the happy couple. Uh, and in that case, it was easier to send it off to the lab and get the prints printed up because you wouldn't bother doing all those colour pictures yourself. And because this was a professional film, it was much more uh, able to cope with all the latitudes, etc. Now with all these films, talking about latitude, with a uh, slide film, your exposure latitude is depending on how you push and pull. And you probably, literally, if you're a stop over or under exposed, it will go a bit muddy you'll lose what slide film gives you, which is this wonderful, vibrant colours, this fantastic look that you get with slide film. 
So if you're a stop out either way, over or under exposed it, you've lost it. So exposure latitude, forget it. It hasn't got any, and that's why I suggest you shoot with film if you really want to learn your trade. With colour film, it's probably two stops, over or under. Dynamic range, it's going to be the same as black and white film, it's going to be about six, from the darkest corner to the brightest spot. So when you're exposing, use your matrix metering and see, and if you really want to check, and you should be checking, then you should be looking through your light meter to check what the darkest point is and what the brightest point is, and if there are more than six stops between them, then split the difference and take your pictures at the in the centre of the two points, so at least you're going to get as much detail in the dark and as much detail in the highlights as you possibly can. Well, I hope that's explained everything. Any questions, please just ask in the comments below. And I will be loading those films up and going out onto the streets and taking some pictures and to show you exactly what happens with print film. And then I'll show you some examples. But that comes later on. Many thanks for watching. Do subscribe. And if you haven't seen the video that I've done about why you should use film, then please do.